So now we move into the exciting part of the session, teaching fundamentals. This is a great opportunity for you to see the videos that are accessible within the program. And we're going to start by showing you the video for picking up. I know that sounds interesting, but uh, it's a fundamental skill of uh, the AFL sport. So let's have a look at this fantastic little video. Welcome to NAB AFL Auskick. Here are some tips on picking up the ball. We're going to learn the best way to pick up a stationary and a moving ball. To pick up a stationary ball, there are three steps. Get sideways, get low, and do a two-handed crocodile pickup. Approach the ball with a low sideways stance, putting one foot in front of the ball so you are standing over the top of it. Bend your knees and get nice and low. Pick up the ball with two hands like a crocodile snapping their mouth. Your fingers should almost be touching the ground. Get your nails dirty. And that's how you pick up a stationary ball. Now, let's learn how to pick up a moving ball. To pick up a moving ball, there are also three steps. Get in line with the ball, get low, and do a two-handed scoop. Get your body behind the line of the ball and have your hands together with your fingers straight to the ground. As you move towards the ball, bend your knees and get nice and low. Scoop the ball up off the ground with both hands like a shovel digging dirt. Again, get those nails dirty. Your fingers should almost be touching the ground. Once you've scooped the ball, turn your fingers up so the ball rolls into your hands. And that's how you pick up a moving ball. So good. As you can see, they're fabulous resources and really worth making sure you check them out. So now we're going to pass over to you, Steph, to uh, give us a bit more detail about how to pick up the ball. Thanks, Kim, and thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining. Um, so as you can see there, that resource um, goes through the skill in its entirety. Um, in our experience as teachers, and you, you would know it's, it's really important to break down the skill. Um, students can often be really overwhelmed if you're showing them it at all at once and expecting them to do um, each step um, in the first go. So my, my tips with this sort of, sort of activity, especially given that we're targeting the younger years here, is to really break it down. It doesn't necessarily need to be always about football. So when it comes to, to picking the ball up off the ground, we know that technique is really, really important. So I would start with something as simple as Simon says. Um, I would demonstrate how to actually pick the ball up, but I would do it in a fun little game way. So Simon says, uh, put your foot over your ball and they can do those sorts of things. So then at least you're, you're breaking it down without them really realising it. Um, Obviously, picking up a ball is a fundamental skill of our game. It's, it is difficult. Um, so you'll see when the, when the kids are actually moving towards the ball, a lot of the time they will put their feet, they won't be side on, okay, and they'll be too front on. And that's when they'll often miss the ball or the ball will roll past them. And that can be really frustrating for them. Um, so to eliminate that, we talk about fast feet and then treading water. Um, and if you talk to the kids as if they're, they're running really fast, but you need them to slow down and tread water and you want to see three little steps, that often does help with them um, before they bend over to pick the ball up. Um, but with any, when it, with any fundamental skill, um, breaking it down so it's applicable to them is important. You can start without a ball. Um, you can do that with the Simon Says game. You can definitely start without a ball and just get that technique right. I often, um, I remember doing placement with the juniors and I asked them to grab their favourite um, pencil. As simple as that, I know it sounds weird, but I remember putting their pencil on the ground and saying, right, you're going to pick up your pencil. And they think it's really silly. But if you're actually getting them to do the right action um, and the right movement, that goes a long way to when you introduce the ball. Um, so, yeah, there's some, just some little tips with that sort of thing. I know they're quite basic, um, but, yeah, kids kids just want to have fun. So the sooner you can get it to, to a footy, um, the better. But, yeah, you can't neglect um, the basics to start with. So you mentioned there that you use a pencil um, before progressing to the football. Do you 
I recommend that teachers move straight to an, an AFL football or is there a, a space for having a round ball in there as a, as a stepping stone? Yeah, absolutely. So the pencil one was just a silly example of, you know, getting kids to get their fingers um, across the ground. So fingers to grass, we say, um, but then you've got the literal students will say, but we're on a court, so you okay, okay, so fingers to ground, um, get your fingernails dirty. Um, you can start with no ball. You can start with a cone. If, if need be, um, that's really important. You can either have the small, the bigger cones or the smaller cones um, and then progressing to a bigger ball, um, you know, soccer balls, basketballs, netballs, whatever it is. Um, but, you know, ball handling is really important. There's so many drills you can do with ball handling, but any, any type of um, equipment in their hands before they progress to a football. We can even use a balloon um, if you can be bothered blowing them up <laughs> prior to, but we know that repetition is the mother of skills. So um, anything that gets them, if they're doing things over and over again, um, that will hold them in good stead for when, when you introduce the footy. Repetition is the mother of skill. That's a great phrase. It must be <laughs> a lot of your day. Um, yes. <laughs> what, are, what are some of the look fors then, Steph? In what, you know, where where do kids sometimes go wrong with this? What what are you looking for when you're coaching, and and how can we help correct them? No worries. You just cut out then, but I'm assuming you asked what are the, some of the common errors and mistakes. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. So. No worries. A lot of the time, um, the students will just run in, bull at a gate, um, and not take those sort of steps prior to um, so just really making sure that they are coming in at a good pace and if they're not side on I think that's crucial um, it's really important that we pick the ball up when we're side on and we get that um, front foot to in line with the footy um, a lot of the time I find students sort of running and they're not turning their body so getting them to turn and that's where those freeze activities um, like Simon says or even just doing a little warm-up activity where they're moving and then you say, okay, freeze in the position and get them to actually stand there like a statue. Um, that's really important because that re uh, sorry, reinforces that movement. Um, so I think one of the common errors with this is obviously overrunning the ball um, and often it's because it's going you're going too fast, um, not being side-on with your body, which obviously centre of gravity shifts um, and you're unbalanced and then can't pick up the ball. Um, and, yeah, so they're probably the two, two main errors. Yeah, and, and the getting side on feels a bit like a safety technique as well, a bit of a self-preservation. Is there anything else from a, a safety perspective that you'd be watching out for? Oh, it's certainly, it, it's definitely a safety um, precaution, especially when, you know, you could be tackled. Um, for the latter years, obviously, we'd then teach the students to pick the ball up, drive their legs, um, or, you know, handball on the up. Um, but the safe the the fact that they are side on, obviously they're wanting to protect the ball, but also their head, um, which is really important. So um, keep your eye on the ball at all times. Side on, once you pick the ball up, um, retain the footy. Um, and I suppose when they're playing, when they're a little bit older, um, you know, you're expecting contact. So we want to make sure that the head's out the way.